All right, guys, today we're going to talk about some of the best steals in my collection. And we're going to go over this one. Some people may agree to disagree on this one because some of these are not as popular, but I think that genuinely, and especially from performance or a performance aspect, these are some of the best steals that I have in the collection. And, uh, of course, I think one of the biggest things when it comes down to steel is there are a lot of good steels out there for specific purposes. But broadly speaking, I think that these are some of at least generalized, you know, some of the best steels that I have in my collection. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, so we're going to go from arguably best to worst. Now, of course, everyone is going to, or sorry, worst to best. Now, arguably, like I said, everyone is going to believe what they want to believe when it comes to steel and performance and so this is all take it with a grain of sand as my ranking metrics but first off we're going to start with aebl now some people may know of aebl i don't think that this steel really ever quite gained a level of popularity that i personally think it does deserve but when it comes to aebl think of this very similarly to a at least in my mind, I think of it similarly to like a higher end 14 C28N Sandvik steel. Of course, it is a very similar steel to Nitro V. Um, it is something along those lines. And so it is not maybe the best steel in the world. You know, it's not Magna Cut. But at the same time, too, I will say ABL 14 C28N Sandvik. Um, all of these steels are really actually very, very good performers for what they are. So a AEBL is the first one up. This, of course, is my custom uh, Gavco nurse, for those wondering what this guy is. And my uh, subscribers love to refer to it as the Halo knife, as it does have a lot of Halo, uh, the video game-wise, a lot of those characteristics to it. Anyways, next one up will be K390. Now, this one, honestly, like, I kind of went back and forth with K390 versus AEBL. K390 has better edge retention, but of course it has a lot less corrosion resistance. So take it for what it's worth. You know, like I said, these steel, the steel listing that I'm gonna like list them as, you know, kind of go back and forth. Some steels perform better in one aspect and worse in others. But K390 is actually a pretty darn good um, tool steel, and it just it has a really really great edge retention. So I think it's like on the knife steel nerves, it's like a nine out of ten, I think. So it's like really crazy high, um, but awesome steel. Pretty hard to sharpen, I will say, but it is a pretty cool overall steel. Of course, this is a Spyderco Delica four with the black handle scales on it, and then of course I blued my K390 blade on this guy. Okay, the next two, in my opinion, and I think, if I remember correctly, or if memory serves, um, perform very similar, according to the Knife Steel Nerds, and that is going to be CPM Rex 45 and CPM Crew Wear. So these two are pretty similar performing steels, but we're going to talk about CPM Rex 45 first. Now, CPM Rex 45 is being placed below Crew Wear, because while Crew Wear isn't really a stainless steel, it is more corrosion resistant than Rex 45. But Rex is a really good uh, steel at holding an edge. It takes a mirror polish super well and the performance is there. In fact, this is actually the knife that is in my pocket today. Well, it's right here technically, but this is the one that I am EDCing today and I actually just love the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. This is, of course, the Cutlery Shop exclusive or limited edition, so it has the OD Green on one side and Blaze Orange on the other, but that is CPM Rex 45. All right, like I alluded to, the next one up is CPM Crew Wear. Now, Crew Wear is another steel that I feel is a lot like AEBL. Well heat treated, Crew Wear is an amazingly well performing steel. However, I think Crew Wear, at least when it comes to knives, because Crew Wear, um, similar to like Z Wear and a few others that are basically derivatives of this same steel, kind of the really good steels, but they got overshadowed by things like Magna Cut because by the time they made it to knives or popular use in knives. 
So unfortunately, CPM crewwear kind of got overshadowed by steels that just perform even better than steels that perform well. So in my opinion, I actually really like crewwear personally, like it's a really cool steel and I will give this to crewwear. It does sharpen up, in my opinion, very easily. And so I like that about it. Like I said, it is also semi stainless. It's not technically a stainless knife, but it does have higher, you know, corrosion resistance than K390 than uh, Rex 45. So you will see some added benefits in that. And it has a really, really good edge retention to it. In fact, I wish that Benchmade, um, even though I don't love Benchmade and I don't have a lot of them, I do wish Benchmade would honestly use Crewware a lot more because they have recently started pushing a lot of knives like the Mini Claymore and others in CPM D2. And I really wish that they already have CPM Crewware in their lineup. I wish they'd just stick with CPM Crewware because Crewware, uh, CPM Crewware is definitely better than CPM D2, which a lot of people sit here and they're like, oh, you know, D2 is so great. And don't get me wrong, D2 is good. But if you already have um, CPM Crewware in your lineup, uh, you might as well just use it. All right, so now we're gonna officially step into the land of stainless. So all of these previous mentions were essentially just tool steels, high performing tool steels. ABL leans into stainless as well, but these are all like super steels and stainless. So the first one off we're gonna talk about is probably the one that I know the least about, and that is the Chad Nichols Damascus. I had to throw this one on the list because Damascus is arguably a stainless steel depending on what it's one mixed with and two um, depending on how it is made and I think I believe I'd have to check the seal composition on this but I do believe that uh, Chad Nichols Damascus uses stainless steel as a part of it like the core is likely a tool steel or something that has you know like a uh, better edge retention but the uh kind of outer shell to it or its other layers are stainless they also might be something else entirely non-iron or ferrous um, but I'd have to double check that ironically I don't know too much but essentially at the core Damascus is meant to be a more stainless option uh, for steels so it in and of itself isn't exactly stainless but how Damascus is made because it uses multiple layers of different steels um, or different alloys it can be very stainless Okay, now let's jump into proper stainless steels. So I think the first one up here, which would be like the lowest performing of all these high performance steels would probably be CPM S45VN. Now I have quite a few examples of S45VN. This one is my Chris Reeve Knives aluminum uh, Zon, but I also have a large and cozy in 45 and a handful of other blades. So it is a pretty good steel. And honestly, I think once again, very similar to crew wear, I kind of am a little bit sad about S45VN because this is a very, very good steel. Like, make no mistakes. CPM S45VN is not very well talked about. Like, people don't really know of it too much because it just came out at a very poor time. This, once again, was another steel that was announced right alongside the um, kind of advent or when MagnaCut was being brought up. So... S45VN kind of got thrown under the shadows of MagnaCut because it wasn't as high performance as MagnaCut, so to speak. Um, there's a lot of very bold claims about MagnaCut, but you know it wasn't as high performance as MagnaCut, so it kind of got thrown um, to the side. So unfortunately, that is the fate of S45VN, but in my opinion, still like an excellent steel. Like I have no fears and no problem choosing S45VN in a steel. All right, next one up is going to be CPM 20 CV. Now, CPM 20 CV is often regarded very similar to CTS 204P, which is Carpenter's essentially version of 20 CV. And if I remember correctly, I want to say, I'm trying to remember if it's M390. I want to say it's M390. Could be wrong on that, but it is a very high performance steel, of course, made by CPM. Of course, uh, CTS is CTS 204P is Carpenter's and M390 is Bowler's steel. And it is not uncommon for Bowler, Carpenter, and uh, cr or CPM or Crucible to make very similar steels because they are just uh, different foreign manufacturers of high performance alloyed steels. So this one in particular is on my um, 
McNeese Mac 2. This is a three inch Mac 2. I really like the size of it, but um, I have plenty of knives for everything from a Benchmade bug out to a Hinder XM18 and CPM20 CV. So I have a lot of steels in, or a lot of knives in this steel. And once again, it's a very high performance steel. I find it fairly easy to sharpen and I like it. It's definitely quite corrosion resistant, but not quite as corrosion resistant or quite as high performance as the last two steels. So these two, in my opinion, and from a lot of what I can find, are pretty similar in overall performance. And that is going to be Magna Cut, or CPM Magna Cut, and CPM S110B. Now, a lot of knife purists will say that S110B is not as good as Magna Cut, because a lot of people, I think, hype up Magna Cut. But to be clear, S110B has a lot of similar performance to Magna Cut. I think the primary difference, at least, from end user experience would be that CPM S110V is going to be significantly harder to sharpen than Magna Cut. That is kind of one of the things that people love about Magna Cut is it seems to be a steel that defies most rules of, of steel. So basically what that means is like higher hardness steels are going to be harder to sharpen. You know, um, your stainless steels are generally harder to sharpen, stuff like that. And so CPM Magna Cut tends to fly in the face of a lot of those uh, kind of like realities of steel. So anyways, S110V from a performance standpoint outside of sharpening is very similar in edge retention, stainlessness, um, all of those really, really nice properties that one would love about S110V or a steel, I should say, in general. So this one, of course, is on my um, kind of sleeper, so to speak, Manix 2. This is a Spyderco Manix 2 with black G10 handles, but still has that awesome uh, S110V blade. And then, of course, the Magna Cut is on a um, Heretic Manticore X. Of course, this is a limited edition Bounty Hunter version of that knife, but it is still CPM Magna Cut. So overall, it's been a look at the best steels in the knife collection. I have a lot of other steels, and of course, I have a lot of knives in the same steels, multiple knives in crew wear, multiple knives in S20V, um, you know, plenty of steels in like these different, uh, in different knives. And that's kind of what I like to do. I do like to collect multiple steels or a bunch of different steels so I can compare them, contrast them, and see how they perform against each other directly. However, I will definitely say I'm not a knife steel snob. I'm not one of those people that only likes the highest of performance steels because to be completely clear too, I think I am very well aware of the fact that like these are all EDC knives to me, and while I do use my knives, I don't, you know, go out of the way to really push any of these knives to their absolute limits. And so some people may say that, you know, I'm just a poser for that, or they may not like that fact, but, you know, the truth is, you know, I do use my knives, but I don't go out of the way to push these knives to their absolute I don't go out of my way to push these knives to their absolute, you know, like max to see what they can do at their highest end. So for me, you know, so long as it will hold an edge decently, so long as it's decently corrosion resistant, so long as it's, you know, overall a good steel, I don't really mind it. That's why I actually have quite a few knives in here that are, you know, CPM S35VN, CPM S30V, um, you know, so some of these older steels, even 154CM, I have at least, uh, I think at least five, maybe six knives here uh, in my collection that are in 154CM. So like, I really don't mind it. Um, you know, it's just fine. So they're not the highest performing steels, but to be completely clear, I don't really care that much because they are just fine. Anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Hopefully you've enjoyed looking at these cool knives. And as always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.